All right, we are at class 13, well over the hump, headed towards the end of the quarter. Let's get back to our calculation that we started or ended with at last class. As you can see, I have a similar calculation here at 5,500 VA for our general lighting load. Then we have our two small appliance brand circuits and our one laundry circuit. That gives us another 4,500 VA for a total of 10,000 VA for our general lighting load. So the question in the last class was, what do you do next? Well, here's the answer since nobody uh, looked it up or tried to give it to me. The answer is found in table 220.42, our lighting load demand factors. Our lighting load demand factors are as follows. For the first 3,000 VA that we have, we have to take that at 100%. The rest, we take at 35%. The reason I say the rest is because you will probably never come up with a calculation that would be higher than 120,000 VA. So let's go ahead and do this. I have 10,000 VA. I'm going to minus 3,000 VA out of this. And you'll see why I do that in just a second. I want to take that times 1.00, which is 100%. So that equals 3,000 VA. I have 7,000 VA left. I take that at 35% or 0.35 and that gives me 2,450 VA. So I add these up and my total for my general lighting load with the demand factor is 5,450 VA. Now, I hope that you remember that I told you how we need to keep these things organized. So watch what I do here. This is the first thing that we do. Number one, general lighting load, 5,450 VA. All right, that's all for the first calculation. All right, let's take a look at Article 220. Dot 51 electric for fixed electric space heating this is the article that gives us the rules for electric space heating with electric space heating we have to take the load at 100 percent and the reason for that is is electric heat will draw 100 percent of what it's rated at so there is no demand factor with that so what if I have electric heat and AC together? Do I need to take both of them? The answer to that is no. And if you look at article 220.60, non-coincident loads, it states where it is unlikely that two or more non-coincident loads will be in use simultaneously, it shall be permissible to use only the largest load that will be used at one time for calculating the total load of a feeder or service. So we are at heat versus AC. In this calculation, we are going to have a gas furnace with a three horsepower AC unit. So if we're doing heat versus AC here, it's going to be the AC. Because we are looking at a motor load, we do have to look into another article to figure out what our ampacity is going to be for that. We need to look at table 430.248. That is full load current in amps for single phase alternating current motors. If we go down to three horsepower, and we go over to 230 volts, that gives us 17 amps. All right, so I need to take, for my heat versus AC, I need to take my 17 amps, and I need to take that times 
240 volts. And that's going to give us 4,080 VA. So for our second part of our formula, I'm done. Number two is 4,080 VA. So let's move on into dryers. In 220.54, we find that the code tells us that for a dwelling unit dryer, it will have to be either 5,000 watts or volt amps, or the name plating, or the nameplate rating, I should say, whichever is larger. Well, normally a dryer will run around 4,500 watts, or 4,500 VA. So in this case, 5,000 watts would be greater. So what we need to do here is we need to use 5,000 watts. So for our dryer, we're at 5,000, I guess I should say VA. All right, see how we're keeping track of this on the right side of the, the paper? You know, like I said, this is something that I do. It's up to you if that's how you want to handle it or not. Now, how about our fixed appliances? In 220.53, we also find that it's permissible to apply a demand factor of 75% to the nameplate rating load of four or more appliances that are fastened in place. This does not include ranges, clothes dryers, space heating equipment, or air conditioning equipment. Well, let's look at how we're going to calculate this out. I'm going to say I have a water heater that's 6,000 VA. I'm going to have a dishwasher. And it's going to be equal to 1,500 VA. I'll have a trash compactor. That's 1,500 VA. And then I have a disposal. And that also equals 1,500 VA. If I total this up, I find I have 10,500 VA. Well, I have four or more, so I have at least four. So I can take that times 0.75. Now, if you only had three of these, you would have to take whatever you came up with with your calculation there, and there would be no demand factor applied. It only applies if you have four or more. So if I take 10,500 times 0.75, I'm going to get 7,875 VA. So let's write that down on this side. Seven thousand eight hundred seventy-five VA. All right, we have four steps of our five steps to complete this calculation done. So what's left? Well, what's left is cooking equipment. And that will be our, our range, our cooktops, our double ovens. And we're going to find that there's a table. Article 220.55 is where you'll find this table. And in this table, it gives us some not only de demand factors, so we could take our, our load times a factor to get a smaller VA number, but we'll see in column C 
that it tells us exactly what our load is, and there is no calculating there. So in this calculation, I'm going to have a 12 kilowatt or 10,000 watt range. If you look in column C, it shows us that if you have a piece of cooking equipment that is not over 12 kW, which I'm not over 12 kW, then I can use the demand factor that's right here. And if I look at the number of appliances, I have one, and I go all the way over to column C, I can see that I can use 8 kilowatts instead of the 12 kilowatts that I would normally use. So for number 5, I would have I have 12 kW, which really equals 8 kW. So let's put that over here to the right. All right, let's get ready to add this up. If I take all of these and I add them up, I get 30,405. What? Yeah, VA. I'm going to divide that by 240 volts because that's our nominal voltage. Because what we're looking here for is our feeder size for this service. So if I divide that out by 240 volts, I get approximately 127 amps. So I'm going to put a 150 amp service in this house. Well, what size of service feeder would I need to be using? Well, what you need to do to find that out, because we're in a dwelling unit, and these rules only apply for dwelling units, you can use table 310.15B7, which is only for 120, 240-volt, three-wire, single-phase dwelling services. When I go down to the column that says 150 amps, and I go over to the column for copper, I need a number one copper conductor for this service. So if you were doing this calculation for a test, what I would want to know from you is what is the total VA for your residence that you calculated? What is the service size? And what size feeder conductor would you be using? I have all of that on this piece of paper right now. Well, there's a lot more for us to go over in class. What I want you to do is go ahead and try to do one of these calculations on your own. Come up with your own numbers and see what you can do. I also want you to take a look at this drawing that I made so you can kind of see how I've laid things out. And you can see each and every circuit that we figured here. That's why everything on the right is color-coded. Everything on the right is color-coded to the branch circuits that are connected to this panel in this graphic. I hope that gives you a little bit more of a visual representation of what we're doing here so you can kind of see it as you're writing it down. Well, once again, I, I love math, so this is a great module for me to teach. I enjoy this actually very much. I don't know if you guys do or not, but this is something that will help you in the future so that as you are putting uh, things together in the field, you can begin then to visualize and then calculate what size of service that you need.
So I'll see you next class. And be safe.